The people of this city have spirit, I'll give them that. They've not lost the will to fight. I can imagine how torn you must feel, looking at that sky. Knowing what it means to everyone. And that you're responsible. If you're thinking of coming clean, don't. It might make you feel better, but it would make things a hundred times worse for them. They're better off not knowing. You're in a corner, and there doesn't seem to be any obvious way out. That doesn't mean it's over. However hopeless it seems, you haven't lost yet. I remember looking up at the sky like this before. Being caught up in a strange kind of calm. It was after we realized we were responsible for the Flood. When we resolved to journey to the Source by taking our own lives. One last sacrifice. One last fight. One last failure. And then the Oracle appeared and... Well... You know the rest. There were times in the years and decades that followed when I wondered if we might not have been better off just letting the rejoining happen. That we'd made one last mistake. But seeing that giant Talos stir to life cured me of any doubts I still had. Always. Always we took the burden of fighting upon ourselves. That's what heroes do, isn't it? So we never had the chance to see anything like that. Our people coming together as one. To think that their hope still burns so bright. That they were still so eager to live, they would lift up their fellows, one on top of the other, till they reached the sky. No. We made the right decision. And I can finally feel proud of the part we played in helping this world survive. Well, come on then. As I thought, what happened between us was no coincidence. My story may be finished, but the fates have gifted me a minor role in yours. I suspected as much the moment I realized you could hear me. But it's hard not to doubt yourself when you're the man who caused the flood. I was afraid to do anything more than watch for fear of making things even worse. But no longer. After all, the path I once walked is now yours to finish.
for what it's worth, I cast my lot with yours. If you need a push, I'll be right there behind you. If you lose control, I'll do my best to stop you. So, let us be about it, hero. You were up here all alone, brooding and fretting and wallowing in your woes. But look at you, grinning at nothing like a pollen drunk pixie. Hmm. Look at what you've done to your ether. It's a mess. And you have cracks running all through that pretty soul of yours. My poor little sapling. Whatever am I to do with you? Yield up my throne. You could claim it. Cut ties with the mortal world. Hide away in the castle. It won't fix the problem. But would it really matter? If any pesky heroes come calling with steel and magic, all of Eel Meg will rise up in your defense. My crown and scepter are yours, if you want them. What? Don't give me that look! Of course I knew before I asked that you'd never ever heed such a wicked suggestion! And besides, what would become of my precious and ephemeral flower? Beloved sapling, you are lost, confused, and have precious little time to gather your wits. Your kind is always so preoccupied with what lies ahead, and so we muddle your vision with fog and glamour. But such trickery is easy to see through. Stand very, very still. Think not of where you need to go. Where you are right now, at this moment, at this time, in this place. Our Kerm of Crystal. From shadowed hood he watched you go, his ruby eyes with warmth aglow. See yourself as he saw you, and that shall be the clearest clue. You stand in his garden, dear sapling. Ask his flowers what they know, and you will surely find an answer. But what will you do with it, I wonder? I'll be watching and waiting. Waiting and watching. I have unlocked the door to the Umbilicus. You are free to enter. 
Once you have what you require, I'll see it sealed once more. Until then, I will remain without. moment to collect my thoughts, I pray thee. Thy true name is Grahartia, then. By thy claims, thou too art a native of the Source, though from an age beyond our own, when the Eighth Umbral Calamity hath visited devastation upon our star. Thou hast, by subtle means, reached across the boundaries of time and space to unsow the seeds of catastrophe ere its creeping vines drag our champion unto an early grave. In essence, yes. A difficult story to swallow, I am sure. I doubt not the veracity of thy words, not the account of thy coming, nor that of the fated calamity. Yet my mind straineth still to apprehend the enormity of this tale. Wouldst thou favor me with a gradual unfolding of its chapters? Certainly. But where to begin? I should start with those great minds who survived the calamity. Sid Garland being perhaps the greatest. In hopes of staying the unending tides of war, he and his fellows pursued all manner of possible solutions. One of these was rooted in a theory which unified several fundamental principles discovered over the course of the Warrior of Light's adventures. It proposed a method by which one could enter the River of Time, traverse the rift, and leap between worlds. Perfecting that idea, however, was a work which consumed their lifetimes, and thus was it left to future generations to decide whether theory would be put into practice. But all the while, the world continued to burn. Hope was a feeble outpost beset on all sides by thievery and misery and murder. People cried out in despair, There is no hope! We are finished! Mankind is finished! Then others raised their voices in answer. Though we be beyond salvation, those who came before may yet be saved. We will forge a crossroads and pave the way for a different future. By the wisdom of our forebears, we will prevent this calamity from ever having come to pass. The fighting went on unabated, but some few took up Sid's research and labored to realize those impossible ideas. After two centuries of labor, their descendants finally succeeded in awakening the Crystal Tower, an integral part of the process, and, in doing so, roused its caretaker, me. By this stage, scholars had largely established the phenomena underpinning the rejoining, and identified the first as the shard which precipitated the Eighth Umbral Calamity. This grand structure was already capable of storing the energies required to attempt the translocation. All that remained 
was to augment some few of its functions based upon the theoretical models of Sid and his compeers. And by means of such technologies didst thou affect thine arrival in the first, to an age before this star had joined with the Source. Some while before, as it turned out. It is all but impossible to predict how time will flow between one world and the next, and we missed our mark by almost an entire century. But this only worked in our favor. The Sin Eaters could not be defeated without the blessing of light, and summoning the only woman who might stand a chance against them would require decades of preparation. An undertaking of scarce credible endurance. That thou hast kept thy plan from falling into disarray these many years bordereth on the miraculous. Yet howsoever history be rewritten, thy present self was shaped by events which followed the calamity. Should said catastrophe be averted, the very skein of thine existence will unravel. Surely thou hast foreseen this. I am aware of the consequences. Tis for that very reason Sid and his colleagues bequeathed their legacy as an offering, and not an edict. To give all of oneself for the happiness of others, and with no promise of reward. Tis a hard thing to ask. Harder still for those condemned to survive in a world which pitted brother against brother. Indeed, you are right to call the execution of this plan miraculous, though the force which held it together was nothing so inexplicable. It was her, the warrior of light, has been our unbroken thread. Where others would stumble and fall, she would rise above. Where others would break and run, she would carry on. The Warrior of Light's tale is one of unyielding bravery. To tell it was to feel courage. To hear it was to feel hope. It was a breath of inspiration in an age of suffocating shadow. In the histories of a fallen nation was our hero hailed as its greatest ally. In the time-worn pages of a noble's memoirs were her deeds joyously retold. For many, these stories were the flame which warmed them through the coldest of nights. And so it should come as little surprise that the plan found no shortage of volunteers, concerning as it did the Warrior of Light herself. It was their chance to add their own verse to the hero's saga. She was the lodestar that brought them all together to send their final message back through time and space to her. The light of your legacy was our torch in the darkness. Burn bright again and live. I am merely the bearer of that wish. Come to ensure it is safely delivered. Wherefore sharest thou this burden with me and no other? What wouldst thou have me say? That you will be my accomplice? It was you yourself who convinced me of your suitability when you spoke of how you learned of the Flood and of your part in arranging Linphilia's journey to the First. Your actions showed uncommon resolve. It was clear you were committed to the cause of saving this world. I knew I could trust you to choose the right path forward. 
even if that choice came with a heavy price. What price? When all is said and done, and the last of the Light Wardens lies slain, I will absorb their corrupted ether, and then I will die. Knowing what I know of your companions, not to mention your champion, they will try to stop me. But in saving one, they would save none. Therefore, I implore you to aid me in concealing my identity and ensuring this tale ends as it must. To this end, I would have you take what I have told you of the Calamity and make of it a portent. A prophetic vision you beheld in the swirling chaos of the rift. History remembered the Warrior of Light, as I knew it would. And I will suffer no other to rescue the champion whose star has charted my course. I will see this tale to a happy end, my friend. There has been enough tragedy. Careful now. If you lose control again, the light could claim you for good. Although it's probably only a matter of time before you succumb to the change in any case. What do you mean to do? on our way. Deacian mentioned the Tempest, did he not? That's the stormy seas around Calusia to you. His lair must be down there somewhere, hidden beneath the waves. found thee. Word reached us of thy recovery, and thus did we gather with all haste. Ah. By thy looks I gather thou hast gleaned that which I came to tell thee. Orionje has shared everything with us. The Exarch's true identity and purpose. I offer no excuses. When I agreed to aid the Exarch with his plans, it was in full acceptance of the condemnation I would face when my duplicity was laid bare. Yet it is not rancor but resolve that I sense in thee. Thou art fully intent upon walking thy path to its end, art thou not? If thou canst forgive my deception, or, failing that, set aside thy displeasure for a time, I do beg leave to follow thee. What strength and wisdom I possess are thine to command.
I thank thee. Doubt not but that I will do all in my power to repay thy kindness and fulfill the Exarch's wishes. I'm sorry, but I don't think this is a good idea. Leaving the Crystarium, I mean, with or without Urianche. What I did for you won't last forever. There's no telling when the light will break free again. Please, you must stay here. At least for a little while longer, we will find a way to cure this, I promise you. How can you make promises? We don't even know where to start. Alizé, please. You know Reen was only trying to help. Of course I know! I know only too well! But making promises you have no way of keeping is not a kindness. It's a lie. Plain and simple. We've all searched high and low for an answer. And every one of us came back empty-handed. I am not about to stand in her way now. Not after failing her in her hour of need. No, the least we can do is... We will go with you as well. There is naught to be gained by standing still. Indeed, we have exhausted every other avenue. Lead, and we shall follow. If there is any hope to be found, then we will surely find it at your side. Are we all in agreement, then? Is there aught we can do to help? Though we may not know the whole story, we do know you're in for a fight. And while the Exarch's away, it falls to the rest of us to see the Warrior of Darkness is given a proper send-off. You told them! No! Well, not in so many words. Aye, we didn't need his spell down for us. When the night sky appeared over whichever place you went to, it was harder not to put two and two together. From the moment I heard that you and the Exarch shared the homeland, I had my suspicions. Long had he been waiting for a certain someone to arrive, and I knew at once that it must be you. Exactly. When he went up to meet you, it was clear it was no ordinary visitor. That spring in his steps spoke volumes. I could feel his excitement. Eat him! That's right! We do not fully understand where you or the Exarch hail from, or why you've all done so much to protect us. But we are deeply grateful nonetheless. So, if there is anything at all we might do to aid your journey, you need only name it. What would you have of us? You might have invited them to join us, where there are not so many. Come, they are waiting. What is your will, O oh warrior of darkness? <laughs> <laughs> 